Hello friends, good evening and welcome to another session of Tech Tablet Daily Dose with Varun Rao. In today's session, we would be looking at the HTML developer questions, which is HTML or HTML5, which is one of the latest version, right? So the aim of today's video or session is to look at the frequently asked HTML technical questions, apart from which we would also be looking and understanding at the general business expectation from any HTML consultant and how do we answer these questions in an interview. So, we would be following a bottom to top approach rather than a top bottom approach because we would first be looking at how to answer followed by business expectations and then we will be looking at the questions or the technical questions. So basically whenever you're talking in interview the first baseline is to be confident and whatever you're answering irrespective of the fact that your answer might be right or wrong always stay confident about whatever you're answering because that is the way you do it. You cannot be inconfident or unconfident about whatever you are answering. But then when you talk of business expectations, every HTML consultant or developer, when he joins, the employer has a set of basic business expectations irrespective of the experience that you carry. It is like you have to understand and you have to be able to interpret whatever is being told to you so that you are able to develop the same thing which has been advised or instructed. <coughs> now this is the step one, right? Now let us look at the frequently asked HTML technical questions. Now the first one is what is HTML? Now we all know what HTML is. It is nothing but hypertext markup language, which is a very common language of WWW, which is World Wide Web. And these uh, HTML documents are generally made up of two things. That is the content and the tags. Right, and then they are the standard text formatting language that is used for creating or displaying any web page. Right now, the second one is do all HTML tags come in pair? Just think about it for a second, pause the video, think about it. The answer is no, because it is not required that every HTML tag needs to have a closing tag. Now, you have image tag, a line break tag, all these do not require the counterpart. What is the difference between an element and a tag in HTML? So basically what element does is it communicates to the browser as to how to render the text. But when it is surrounded with angular bracket, you know, they form the HTML tags, right? And HTML tags generally come in pairs and they have text and HTML tag is what because of which you are actually able to see the output like a button if you want a button then you have to add this button word in the angular bracket to make it a tag what is semantic html now this is a coding style where the tag which is embodied and whatever is happening you know the text is meant to convey like you have semantic HTML like B, B for bold, but at the same time, you know, the semantically correct thing to do is use strong rather than B, B for bold. I, I is for italic, but then again, semantically correct is EM, right? So these tags, uh, you know, will have the same bold and italic effect, even in spite of different tagging words that are used. So, you know, the effect and the output would remain same even while demonstrating you know the meaning and the structure here you know this is what semantic html means what is doc type is the question number five so basically this term doc type it tells the browser which type or you know the which type of html is used on the web page and in turn the browsers use this doc type to determine how to render a page so this is you know an interdependable term or a syntax used. Now, if you do not have a doc type, then you may have many inconsistencies when you're loading your page because your browser does not know what is the type of document or the type of HTML that's being used. Then we have how many types of HTML tags are available or used for a simple web page. No matter how simple the web page is, we use nothing less than eight, which is, you know, four pairs of tags with the first being HTML, the second being head, the third being title and the fourth being body. These are the ones which are used, whatever be the case, right? Then you have a syntax, uh, sorry, what is the difference between a bulleted list and a numbered list? There is only a tag level difference. That now, 
for a bulleted list you use ul which is an unordered list tag and if it is a numbered list then you use ol which is ordered list that is it what will happen if you overlap a set of tags nothing would happen the first one would get recognized that's it now if you're using a button and you have another tag inside a button then the first one would be recognized by the system right I hope you have been able to understand what I'm trying to convey with respect to the overlapping set of tags, right? So what I, I would just like to repeat this again. Whenever you're using two set of tags, the first tag would be recognized, right? And you would generally recognize this problem when the text does not display properly on the browser screen. The next question is what is the difference between div and frame right a div is nothing but a container it's a generic container for grouping some elements and you know styling but if you're talking of a frame right now this creates division within the web page and and this should be used within the frame set tag so frame has another tag which is frame set right but the use of frame and frame set are no longer popular as they have you know been replaced with you know much more flexible iframe tag right and they have become highly popular for embedding foreign elements like like even the youtube videos now fit into a page so all this is thanks to the iframe what is the real difference between html and html5 the base question now there are many differences between html and html5 but when you're talking of a very broad perspective then html was just a language for laying out text and images on a web page and nothing else but html5 can be viewed as an application development platform as well right which html was not able to do and this also has a much better support in terms of quality for the video audio and other interactive graphics as well and it also has many new elements and it also supports offline data storage for applications and it has a more or you know much enhanced or robust exchange protocol so hence, you know, I would say that the proprietary plugin technologies like Adobe Flash, Microsoft Silverlight, Apache Pivot, or you know, the Sun Java FX are no longer actually required because the browsers can now process these elements without any additional requirements or any, any additional plugins. So this is what HTML5 and HTML is all about. So I hope you have enjoyed the session and understood how to answer confidently. And when you are asked a question, Take a moment's time and then answer. So do stay subscribed to Tech Tablet Daily Dose if you have enjoyed the session as there is a lot of knowledge yet to be exchanged between us and a lot of information yet to be shared. Do stay subscribed. Have a great day. All the very best. Thanks a lot.